Good morning, folks. As previously reported, the satellite accompanying the SpaceX Dragon failed to hit proper orbit and will not be recovered. We keep up with the experiments taking place and the updates from Space Ref, some interesting stuff going on. Did a double take on the title of this article. This is no place for an Agenda 21 introduction, but I highly recommend you do some sleuthing if you don't know. And wow, folks, the official's dropping this gift in my lap. Since my Starwater video, I've gotten three or four of these little nuggets reinforcing my few suppositions laid between NASA's facts. Folks, New Zealand took a moderate quake as the day turned UTC. The Congo had a little shaking going on as well. Over in the Northeast Caribbean, anything over four in this area could signify an uptick. The Kamchatka Peninsula was hit with a 6.1 and wasn't just that quake. You can see the area is peppered with epicenters from the last 24 hours. Just south of that, we have the sister storms dominating the Western Pacific. Preparoon set to dust the Japanese coastline. Tropical Storm Rafael has moved north out of the Caribbean. Paul might just take a hard left and miss Mexico, and in the Indian Ocean, Cyclone Aeneas has developed an eye and is currently the most powerful storm on Earth two weeks before this cyclone season begins. The U.S. saw a few crazy rain totals yesterday from this same exploding storm system that actually spawned a small tornado yesterday. We'll come back to this, but first, the Northwest has major wind advisories today. On the pressure map, you see a convergence of systems both Northwest and East where the storms are. You can see where the wind is expected to be fierce, and there should be no shock that our Torcon watch zone tonight is slightly shifted East from yesterday. The UK and Europe is watching a North Atlantic cloud system from near Iceland pushing out warmer air starting in the west. Australia has enjoyed some warmer weather. Expect that mostly to continue as the high pressure system keeps the Antarctic air trapped while letting in just modest rain amounts from the north if anything. Solar wind. We are exiting a coronal hole stream calmly but then Without warning or density spike, the induction magnetometer revealed a resonance like I've never seen before. SOBs covered it up this morning. The rheometer reveals a massive shield failure at the same time as the ionosphere worked to absorb penetrating solar plasma. The scariest part is there is no cause for this to have happened, not unless a gamma burst from constellation Hydra at that exact same time did it. I know guys, that's not supposed to be possible or even make sense mechanically. I just got nothing doing on the solar wind. More bad news. The F1 layer couldn't stay quiet with days on end of wild F2 critical frequencies. We got a jump over 8 megahertz line and as we check for the full year, it's the highest since last spring and higher than any recorded measurement before 2011. By the way, this nice line is destined to become jagged once more as we have two coronal holes facing Earth and setting their streams this way for a two to three day journey to Earth. Still no major flares, although if anything I suppose we are waking up slightly. Despite Noah's labeling, we essentially have three beta gamma spots up north and none is flaring, including the new guy just cresting. Same story on the south with spots that hush upon breaking into view. Still no explanation for our quiet sun, but I'm working on a video explaining why this lack of flares isn't a good thing. New moon today, folks. It's just before 6 a.m. Eyes open with no fear, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.